I'm Hayden Smith, a current medical student at Emory University School of Medicine, and I will be walking through our micro learning curriculum series uh, as a part of the RSNA case collection on vestibular schwannoma. Here we have a non contrast CT of the head, which are often negative for vestibular schwannomas. The region, which is noted by the blue arrow, is isodense to the brain, and you may see some structural changes depending on the size of the neoplasm. You also may see moderate enhancement with contrast administration. MRI findings include a T2 weighted hyper intense neoplasm along the course of the eighth cranial nerve. This course includes the internal acoustic meatus, also known as the internal auditory canal, and the cerebellopontine angle. Our image on the right with the blue arrows demonstrates a left vestibular schwannoma that extends from the internal acoustic meatus into the cerebellopontine angle, forming the traditional ice cream cone shaped lesion. Additional MRI findings include post contrast enhancement. In our pre-contrast T1 weighted images, we see a neoplasm that is iso-intense to adjacent brain as shown by the blue arrow. In our post-contrast T1 weighted images, we see avid post-contrast enhancement as shown by the yellow arrow. Schwannomas can involve any peripheral nerve. Other than cranial nerve 8, the most common cranial nerves involved include the facial nerve as shown by the blue arrows in the image on the right the trigeminal nerve, and the hypoglossal nerve, both of which will be shown on the next slide. Here we have T1-weighted post-contrast images of a trigeminal nerve schwannoma on the left and a hypoglossal nerve schwannoma on the right, as denoted by the blue arrows. Pay special attention to key anatomical structures that are related to each cranial nerve. Schwannomas can also occur within spinal nerves, as a mass emanating from the neural foramen, as shown by the blue arrows in our image to the right. We still see avid post-contrast enhancement on T1-weighted images. On to the discussion. Vestibular schwannomas are benign, slow-growing tumors of Schwann cells, which are peripheral nerve myelinating cells, and they typically arise from the vestibular cochlear nerve. They most commonly develop in the fourth through eighth decades of life, and they bring a good prognosis as a WHO grade 1 tumor with a low rate of recurrence. Vestibular schwannomas can present in younger individuals with neurofibromatosis type 2, and here they're often bilateral. Patients often present with symptoms related to the cochlear and or vestibular divisions of cranial nerve 8. This includes sensory neural hearing loss, asymmetric tinnitus, unsteadiness, or true vertigo. Patients can also have facial weakness, pain, and numbness when the adjacent brain stem, cranial nerve 7, and cranial nerve 5 are affected. Clinical and imaging findings can help diagnose a vestibular schwannoma. MRI indications include asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss, tinnitus, and vertigo. On imaging, you're looking for an enhancing mass involving peripheral cranial nerves. You can also perform cranial nerve testing to see if there are any other cranial nerves involved. Treatment for a large vestibular schwannoma typically includes surgical resection and or radiation therapy. For a small or asymptomatic vestibular schwannoma, try a conservative wait and watch strategy with MRI surveillance every 8 to 12 months. The differential diagnosis for a CPA or IAM neoplasm includes meningioma, epidermoid cyst, non-acoustic schwannomas, lipoma, granulomatose disease, and metastases. The meningioma is not typically centered around the IAM. It's centered lower and looks like it's growing into the IAM. The epidermoid cyst does not enhance on contrast and has reduced diffusion on diffusion-weighted imaging. In conclusion, a vestibular schwannoma is relatively common and may lead to vestibular cochlear nerve-related symptoms like hearing loss and tinnitus. Imaging findings include T1 weight enhancing and T2 weight 
hyper intense masses in the internal acoustic meatus, which may extend into the cerebellopontine angle. Other nerves and locations can also have schwannomas, particularly other cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Imaging findings and clinical symptoms are typically quite specific for vestibular schwannoma. Here are a few references for those interested. And thank you for listening to this micro-learning curriculum series as a part of the RSNA case collection on vestibular schwannomas.